Hello, welcome to code walkthrough of the Ceph object store tool. Um, I guess ask any questions as we go. Um, and then maybe we'll have questions at the end. Um, sure. I Can wanted to with uh, just like an idea of what the object store tool is and does for folks who aren't familiar. Okay, well, it lets you um, both modify objects and look at and and modify state of your OSD. It requires that the OSD not be running when you do this because it pretty much mounts things up as if it were like an OSD. Um, so yeah, actually, I was going to talk about the options, which is going to also make it clear what different kinds of things that you can do with it. Um, Sounds good. This is using the boost option libraries or whatever you call it. Um, and if you, you may need to look at the docs on that. I'm not going to go into the details there, um, but it is using a feature where it has um, positional arguments as well as um, regular arguments. Um, so initially the command did everything through a dash dash op argument and um, I assume you can see like my cursor moving down. I wonder if you can, can you see me highlighting that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So um, originally everything was done as a dash dash op. So here you can look at the, um, at a PG's info, at a log, um, you could remove a PG, for example. These required additional, in some cases, like in those, it required an additional argument to be specified, like the PG ID. So that was dash dash PG ID and the PG ID. Um, so, um, sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog, but hopefully not. <laughs> um, Okay, so later we wanted to be able to individually, for repairing purposes, um, modify individual objects. So um, the op semantics really wasn't conducive to that. So we added an additional positional arguments, which we can see right here. Um, so if you don't use a dash dash op, you are going to specify an object. You can specify its name, and then you can specify additional commands. Like, let's just look at, so we got list omap. So uh, that's a simple one. So it doesn't need this other arg1 and arg2 just to list omaps. Um, so, um, so depending on if you're adding a new feature, likely you're adding it as an object-based feature or a um, an op-based feature. Um, so let's see. There's, you know, miscellaneous options like debug, force. Um, let's see. So I definitely wanted to go over that option stuff because, yeah, we had a case where somebody added an op and then they tried to use the positional arguments as the extra arguments and it, it got confusing, but it, 
it makes the code confusing because it had to to provide that semantic it had to actually use this object argument as the as like one positional argument the first positional argument for one of the dash dash ops and that's not consistent with the rest of the um the rest of the um features but it worked out okay except that the code might seem confusing because in that spot it says get an uh, get the object argument and, but it's using that with the op um which oh l apply layout settings that's the only one that that acts that way ah sorry that was my fault oh okay <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, we maybe we, other than the confusing from historical reasons, it, um, it we could have done this more because sometimes in the past we've added an op and then we had to add like, uh, I don't know if it was namespace or FSID or something where we had to add it as another dash dash. Anyway, so it um, unfortunately the parsing here gets tricky with for because of these historical things the way this evolved. Right, like here it's saying you can't have an op and an object syntax, but it had to make exceptions for the list op and the um, apply layout. Um, so I don't know if we want to get into um, beyond main parsing arguments, it then just pretty much operates on based on what what you're requesting. So then we would have to go and look at, we could start looking at individual features um, in order to get into the code that way. Um, so let's look at, actually let's look at list because in order for you to operate on object, you, um, sometimes want to list out the JSON of all your objects so that you can pick the one that you want to operate on. And we, we do have a feature where you can just name the object. And as long as there's no ambiguity, that'll work. But it's not, but if you use, if you're writing a script or something, you should use the JSON and, um, So that it's so it's not ambiguous which object you're operating on. If if there's any ambiguity uh, with an object where you specify just the name, the command will fail. It, you, it has to be unambiguously one object. Um, right. So, oh, right. So this is actually if it's not list. Um, so where is list itself? Okay, so basically we're, um, we're looking for a GH object and then we're going to output the JSON of it and that's going to be you'll be able to specify that as the object parameter. Um, if you specify a PGID that narrows the, um, the search, otherwise it's all the PGs. So we'll look at, um, So by the time we're in here, actually, we've already mounted the object store internally. Um, 
we kind of skipped over that in main. But it's doing a lot of the things that an OSD does when it starts up. So it's mounting up the object store and so that it can actually operate on the, um, whether it's file store or blue store, it can modify, um, it can modify objects. But here we're, we've got the object store open and we're using object store commands to operate on it. So we're list collections is like listing the PGs and um, we're looking for the PG that's specified. So here we're listing the objects and um, getting their attributes and then um, we passed a function to call with each one. In the listing operation, it's, um, where's that action? Is just this lookup. which keeps all of the matches and will dump them. So actually, I, I, I wish I had um, thought of this, which was just to have, um, oh, I do have some stuff here. So like if we, See if I have any objects there. Oh, maybe there's, maybe that's not compatible. All right, well, that's unfortunate. Um, maybe so anyway, that's about uh, how the, um... Obviously, our tool knows what type of uh, devices it's looking at. How to open the blue store or file store, even if it's, if it's pointing to more than one device. Um, well, let's see. Well, it would only be pointing to one, like the data path. So we can look at the, um, I mean, this is, so here we create the object store. I don't know why this is just in the dupe. Let's see. Oh, dpath. Right, so in main, it actually looks at the type here and either you specify the type. If you don't, if it doesn't have any way to see what type it is, it just assumes it's blue store, but um, then it, it does checking to make sure that it's really something there and then here's where we're actually opening up the object store and we're sp specifying the type there so that could be blue store or file store once you have the object store open it's 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 opaque as to whether it's file store or blue store
and there's a mount, FS mount here. And you can see that, um, and you wouldn't want to have an OSD and an object store tool with it mounted at the same time. They'd be locked. If you try to run the object store tool like twice simultaneously, that would also run into this, which is good. Um, is there anything specific, anything else you want to specifically look at? Um, what, I don't know, what are the most like, common operations you see folks use? Um, probably, um, I guess it's um, either modifying objects like for um, repair, you know, when you have to manually repair something or investigating, like dumping the info. Um, dumping out the, uh, the info to examine why something's going wrong with the, um, with the um, with the PG or an OSD, um, right? So if you look here, um, just a lot of these things are calling into. Everybody should realize that these things are calling into the OSD code. Like we looked at the creating an object store, mounting, mounting it. Here we're reading the info. This is calling into OSD code. The the object store tool is linked with the same libraries and functions that are available to the um, to the OSD. They are the same functions. So you are looking at the, you know, we're looking, examining these data structures. It's not separate code. There shouldn't be code here that, that duplicates the OSD code unless absolutely necessary for some reason, but I, I, I don't know why that would ever be. Um, oh, well, yeah, actually we did some past, some weird past interval stuff at one point that got pulled out on import. Luckily that's been removed. Um, Oh, so I mean, one of the important things that the object store tool does that you want to do usually when you're goofing around with a PG is you want to export the PG first just for safety. So export and import are object store tool features. And most people, the first thing you might do if you're going to start mucking about and modifying anything is to do an export. So export. Um, reads the log and reads everything about the PG, every object, and writes it into a sequential file um, that's also it encode it encodes, you know, binary structures like the info and the log. And it has these sections that are delineated in the in the export file. So there's the metadata section. So that's where it has all the miscellaneous items about the PG. And um, it, write, it writes one OSD map, the current map, but that may be not really necessary anymore. Um, and then it goes through every file. So there's export files here. So now it's going through every um, object in the PG and reading and reading its data and then writing it to the export file. It could be pretty big if you have a large, um, a large PG, a lot of data in the PG. 
but it's it's looking at attributes, OMAPs, and the actual data. So it has like a data section for a data block. And there's the attributes, and there's the OMAP. OMAP header, and then the OMAP, each individual one. And then it, it writes an end marker. So the export file has a very particular format that is pretty much object store tools um, purview to set it and read it back. It's the only one that, um, well, actually, some of this code is shared with the Rados command so that you can import into a pool instead of re-importing the objects as the same PG again. The object store tool itself exports a PG and imports a PG. The Rados command can um, import, it can look at an imported PG file and just bring those objects into a, a, a different pool. It could even be a different cluster, I think. But if you're importing a PG, it must be the same cluster. And it resurrects the PG. So, um, so if you're going to start modifying objects, the first thing you're going to want to do, just for safety's sake, is export the PG make your changes. If anything goes wrong, then you can remove the the one that you broke and then just re re-import it from your saved your saved export. Um, I don't know if there's anything any big deal with looking at the um the do import David, a uh, question: uh, What, when, or what is the use case for when you would like when you would run this command? And second thing, uh, like, could you just open up a terminal and just like write an example uh, or command to just show us how that works? Um, yeah, I mean, I I sort of did that here with the um, the op list, but it it's not running in my in my environment with this whatever um okay. file store blue store that was laying around here mm -hmm. um i could see if i have like a simple could you just do a clear and uh, type on the uh, top of the terminal it's pretty you know, it's almost the last line of the terminal that we are looking at. Yes, this is perfect. Okay, so yeah, that would be like the list, but not working. And then you'd export would be like, like export PGID 1.0. And well, then, and then you'd probably do like file, like my export. And you might import, you don't have to tell it the PG. Um, if you were operating on a file, um, the convenient way to do it is, as, as we talked about the parsing, if I just say, you know, object name, if there was an object called object name, then I could do like set bytes and then give it a file. So basically read Etsy password and write it into object name. So set the bytes. Um, in this case, object name would have to already exist because it's going to look it up in order to get the JSON of to create a GH object for it. But that's just a quirk of 
this is like really convenient. It's just a little quirky when you're just naming the name. Because you might get output like, like there's more than one object name. So sorry, you know, can't do it. I don't know what you mean. You know, it's not specific enough. When you have the JSON, you're probably going to put it in single quotes. And then it's got something like, you know, name equals object name. But you never should have to, you're never going to um, name space. You should never be typing out uh, the JSON. You should be getting it out of op, uh, op list. Because there's like the hash and, and or the in the GH object that you you don't want to have to bother to compute. But it, it would look sort of like this with the um, you know the braced um, JSON there. So right so so i guess export import um we we made the remove pg require you to specify um the force option because we don't want somebody like removing you know you don't want to remove a pg by mistake so there's export and remove as an option. So for safety's sake, you should do export and remove. In case you remove the wrong one, you could re-import it. Um, and if you really know what you're doing and you're absolutely sure, you could do a remove and use the force option. Um, yeah, so most cases, if you're doing repairs, if, if you're just examining stuff, you could examine like the PG log. I mean, that gets into some, in order for you to understand it, it's gonna be more involved in terms of, you kind of have to know the code if you're getting to that level of looking through a PG log. Um, but just looking at this code, um, if you're adding a feature, so chances are if you're adding a feature, hopefully you're familiar with what it is in the OSD that you're now trying to either um, output, you, you're going to then be calling into that code, and, and really all you're doing here is adding it into the parsing as a command, um, and then you know you might have to add in here whether it's like does it require a PGID? You should look at that. If it only applied to like Blue Store, for example, then you might say, oh hey, this command only applies to Blue Store. If if they're trying to do it with File Store. So you're going to do all your like error checking here, and then you're pretty much just going to create a function or just call into um, into OSD code. Like if you're reading some new structure that's been added to the OSD, and you want to dump it out. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I don't really have anything else. And if you guys have any specific questions, maybe you can talk more about uh, when you might actually want to use the import and export commands, and like what 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 the cluster state might be in when you want to use those. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been saying that you might want to export it before you start mucking around. What what other? I guess the other use case I've seen is uh, kind of manually moving data away from OSDs that have maybe can't start up for some reason because they've encountered some kind of crazy bug or maybe have 
suffered a power failure and their power loss protection wasn't placed correctly. So maybe the OSD itself can't start up, but you can still access the object data. So you can kind of export from one OSD and import into a different OSD. Okay. That's, I don't have anything else to say about that. I mean, that that's more of like how we're, yeah, I mean, we could talk about how we're going to, how we might use the object store tool, but yeah. I thought we were going to talk more about just the code here and if you had to modify it or add to it. Yeah, I have my slides on the um on on for the yeah, for the object store tool usage. Yeah, that would be interesting too. We could uh if anybody else has any further questions in my code, maybe we could do those. Oh, okay. We could. Let me I'll find it while if anybody has any questions. Um, I do have a question about uh, versioning. Uh, I tried running a master object store tool on something I think is either V12 or V13, and it got stuck in somewhere opening an attribute. Now, uh, how far back would Object Store recognize older versions? That's a very good question. And that is, my answer to that is, you only want to run the Object Store tool that came with the version you're running. Because yeah. it, is, it is like an OSD, it's not, designed there's no code here that says oh i'm going to use some compatible mode for some older code yeah i was afraid that you were going to say that and in the end i concluded that as well but so then i started looking but that, that's an off track question i started looking into uh, the definition of attributes and things like that because i'm running it on free bsd and sometimes things are a little bit uh uh, worded around in, in, in the objects uh, and the attributes. So is there anywhere in the, in the dev guide a list of used attributes or at least minimal required attributes? I wasn't able to find them. Um, yeah, are you talking about the, the X adders? Yeah. Um. Is there just a generic list or is that drag down the code and try and find them all? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much, there's really only a handful, but, but I mean, the user can have X adders and then there's a few system X adders. Um, yeah, but this was on a, I just v started a test cluster, so nothing happened to it. No, I'm the user. I didn't do anything strange to it. I, I just killed it and went okay. on an uh, object store tool and it crashed on an invalid or a header it couldn't find. So, but hmm. uh, I'll, I'll have to run uh, the debugger a little bit more uh, because FreeBSD also has the, the the error reporting on uh, X, had, uh, X attributes uh, missing has a different return value than the Linux. And I patched it in a lot of places, so I might have missed this one. So, but... uh, yeah, use um, if you use dash dash debug, you'll get um, more detailed output. Yeah, in this case, it wasn't really helping, so I just got... Uh, 87 as uh, extra information, which is attribute not found. 
Uh, yeah, I wonder if it has to do with um, is there if does does the FreeBSD file system are you using file store? Yes, I'm using file store on ZFS, and up till now, uh, I haven't run in incompatibilities with the OSDs and the MOM. Uh, but then uh, I spent zero time on object store until I needed them to fix actually our Linux running cluster. And I thought I'll test it on FreeBSD before I destroy anything. And then I run into this old thing. So, Right. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that, but I'm wondering if it might have to do with, um, it, there's a thing that has to do with whether we store X adders in the inode or whether we store them as special OMAPs. Uh, okay. this, is just, this is just conjecture. And okay. that if you, if you flipped something to say, for FreeBSD, I want to just store it in the OMAPs, then, and you didn't change that comp compilation or however you did that. Uh -huh. I'm not sure where that is, but if you didn't do that for the object store tool, then it could be do it, trying to do the wrong thing. So make sure that your compilation options for the OSD are reflected in the compilation options for the object store tool. Because like I said, it's like an OSD. Yep. It's built like an OSD. So make, make double check that. I will, I will. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, I'm looking for my presentation. Oh, I just had it as a PD. Wait, where is that? Hmm. Oh, maybe my presentation was that recent presentation was maybe was actually about scrubbing, not about um, object store tool, because it was you know repair and things like that. Let's see. Yeah, it was actually about scrubbing and yeah. I, actually, I know I do have a presentation for that, but it's been quite a while. All right, well, uh, maybe we can find that one later. Yeah, I mean, it, I definitely, I, I definitely posted it internally to Mojo a long time ago. I probably should update it. But yeah, maybe we can do a separate thing for just users using it. Yeah, that'd be useful. Any other questions on the code? Our resource tool in general? All right. Well, thanks, David. All right. Thank you.